So you think the RTX 3090 is fast? <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, is Zen 4 finally gonna get more cores? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. That's right, the RTX 3090 and 6900 XT are likely about to be considered fairly mid-range or even possibly entry level by the standards of the next generation GPUs because guys, they are looking at absolutely incredible. I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk about like two times the amount of performance out of the RTX 4090 or even greater and even more than that on the 7900 XT, which is just absolutely mind blowing. But to put things into perspective, recently over on Twitter, the Twitter user Graymon55, who's a pretty prominent leaker and I'm sure you've heard his name before. Well, he was actually discussing how potentially Navi 33, which would likely include cards like the RX 7600 XT, that's right, a 60 class GPU could actually be be faster than the RX 6900 XT and RTX 3090 likely as well. So yeah, this is going to be a really fast generation of cards, and if you're holding on to a 6900 XT right now, well, it's no longer going to be the fastest. It's not even going to be anywhere close. But let's go ahead and first take a look at what Greymon had to say, and then we'll take a look at what the 7900 XT all the way down to the 7600 XT is likely going to look like, and how much performance we can expect to see out of the next generation GPUs, because guys, this is some super exciting stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the diagram, but again, let's go ahead and take a look what he had to say. So according to Graymon55, he said, quote, the first Navi 3 will start with it. As I said earlier, 33 is better than 6900 XT, so it'll be interesting to compare it to the 6950 XT. And this is in response to a tweet he made a little while ago, talking about how Navi 33 would be a monolithic die based on TSMC's 6 nanometer node. However, nowadays, I think we can all pretty much safely assume uh, that the 6 nanometer part of that probably wasn't true as it's looking like their next generation GPUs are actually going to be built on TSMC's 5 nanometer node with some sort of IO die or interconnect being built off of the 6 nanometer node. So it's going to be probably even faster than what he was originally expecting. And just to put this into perspective, guys, the Navi 33 die that he's talking about is likely going to house cards such as the 7600 XT and 7600 because what we do know is that the Navi 31 die is going to be the biggest GPU die they produce. Then it goes to 32 and then 33, which is more of their mainstream GPUs. And if we take a look at this diagram that was constructed using all kinds of various different leaks from sources such as Comp87 Kimi and Graymon55, which by the way, of course, all my sources will be linked in the description below. What we can see here is that the 7900 XT diagram that we're looking at here is going to be likely comprised of six different shader engines for a total of 15,360 stream processors. Now that's a massive increase over the current 6900 XT flagship from AMD, which is actually only made up of 5,120. So you're going to see a massive improvement just on that alone. And we're not even talking about any increase in clock speeds or IPC that you are likely going to be seeing out of this at GPU. Now, to connect these two different GPU dies, because what we're looking at here is actually two different GPU dies that are comprised of three of these shader engines. Well, in order to do that, they're actually going ahead and they're using what they're calling an MCD, which is going to be produced apparently on six nanometers that's going to allow these two things to communicate. Now, how well is it going to work? That's something we don't know at this point, so we don't know how well this is going to scale, but at least in terms of compute, this card is looking absolutely fantastic. Hopefully the latency is low enough that we're going to get great scaling out of it as well. But as, as for the 7900 XT, it's going to be the full die. So that full 15,360 stream processors. Now as for the 7800 XT, that's actually still going to be based off of the full six shader engines. However, it's going to be a little bit cut down. And then the 7800 is also going to be even further cut down from that. But as you can see here, all three of those GPUs are going to be basically a whole new class of performance and they're going to be based off the MCM design approach. Now moving on to the Navi 32 die because what we were just talking about there with the 7900 XT, 7800 XT and 7800 is likely going to be on the Navi 31 die. So moving on to Navi 32, now we're talking about just one monolithic die. This 
is likely going to house cards such as the 7700 XT and 7700. Those cards are going to be likely based off of just three of these shader engines with the 7700 XT having the full GPU die and the 7700 being a little bit cut down from that. And then moving on to Navi 33 and this is what we're talking about here with this Greymon 55 leak. This is going to be based off of just two out of the six shader engines that are going to be present in the 7900 XT. So a massive cut down to one third the amount and that comes to a total of 5,120 stream processors exactly identical to what you're seeing on the 6900 XT today and except for with the 7600 XT even though it's gonna have the same amount of shaders you're likely gonna be seeing just screaming fast clock speeds out of this thing as well as slightly higher IPC making it so that yes the 7600 XT is very likely going to be faster than the 6900 XT which is just absolutely incredible and something that we you know honestly at least me personally I was not expecting to see anything like this out of a generational leap I mean in the past what we've seen is like 70 class cards maybe coming close to the previous flagship but to see a 60 class card actually beating a previous flagship is just something that is completely unheard of I mean just for example if you take a look at the 30 series the RTX 3070 is about on par with something like the 2080 Ti which was Nvidia's previous flagship GPU however the next time around, I wouldn't be too surprised if you see the RTX 4060 kind of on the same level as the RTX 3090. And if you take a look at the 3080 versus the 3090, uh, the 3080 versus 3090, there's not a whole lot of difference in performance between the two cards. Whereas with the next generation, not only is the 60 class likely going to be faster, or at least on par with something like the 3090, but the 4070 is going to be much faster, and the 4080 is going to be much faster than that. And even the 4090 is likely also going to be another massive leap over the RTX 4080, meaning that you're likely going to be seeing two whole extra tiers of performance that we typically don't see in a generation. So yeah, this is going to be a massive performance increase both from AMD as well as Nvidia. If you're looking at something like a 60 class GPU next time, we're talking about something that's going to be on par with something like the RTX 3090 and 6900 XT, and that's just absolutely unheard of, absolutely ridiculous, and it's going to make the RTX 3090 look like something of a bad purchase, at least if you can actually get your hands on a 4060 and 7600 XT. So hopefully that's the case because if that does end up being the case and you can actually buy them for a reasonable price this is going to be an absolutely fantastic generation and you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed so i can go ahead and keep you guys up to date with what's likely going to be the most exciting generational leap that we've ever seen in the history of ever but now let's go ahead and quickly touch on Zen 4 because recently Red Gaming Tech went ahead and put out a video talking about, you know, is Zen 4 going to have more cores? Because there's been a lot of people asking the question, you know, is it time to move past 16 cores on the desktop? And at least according to him, according to his sources, it's very unlikely that you'll see an increased core count out of Zen 4. So that's pretty quick. Uh, what he did say is that there's a possibility in Zen 5 that maybe they'll move to 24 cores. Personally, I honestly don't think you'll see more cores until at a minimum Zen 5, but more realistically, probably Zen 6 or even Zen 7 because we have to keep in mind that in no time in the near future is 16 cores not going to be enough so I think it's probably going to be more like uh, maybe if a new console generation comes out and they're using 16 cores maybe at that time you'll start to see AMD move to 24 or even 32 cores for a mainstream platform but you know as of right now it's kind of a waste in my opinion to be using more resources and more space on a die to increase the core count when that's really not going to help gamers too much it would be a lot more useful for them to go ahead and chase after I IPC and clock speed, which looks like that's probably what they're going to be doing with Zen 4. So if you're asking for more cores for Zen 4, it looks like you're not going to be getting it. But more importantly, what you are going to be getting is a massive increase in performance every single generation as Intel and AMD have been absolutely at each other's throats and it's made for some really great competition, which of course is just really great for us as customers. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think something like the 7600 XT and RTX 4060 are really going to be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.